Hi. I was going through some of the components I accumulated over the years and found this 2.7 to 4.2 gigahertz Hewlett Packard egg oscillator that I bought a few years ago and uh, thought it might be interesting to briefly explain how it works and uh, fire it up and measure some of the key parameters. Egg oscillators or yttrium iron garnet oscillators utilize the microwave resonance property of egg spheres to produce tunable microwave outputs. Egg spheres are polished from single crystals of synthetic yttrium iron garnet, and the spheres used in most oscillators are quite small, while under half a millimeter. My understanding is that the manufacturing cost for the yttrium iron garnet spheres are quite high. If you know the actual range, please do leave a comment below, as I'm quite interested. So, eggs have a couple of uh, fantastic properties. The first one is that when immersed in an external magnetic field, its resonant frequency changes with respect to the magnetic field strength. The resonant frequency range can usually cover at least one octave. The second property is that eggs have very high resistivity and very sharp ferromagnetic resonance peak, namely very high Q-factor. And uh, high Q-factors are usually associated with a very low phase noise and less spurious signals. So these properties are highly desirable for a tunable oscillator, or tunable filters for that matter. I did a teardown of an egg oscillator used in the WaveTech 907 microwave signal generator a while back, and I will provide the link in the description below for those who wanted to take a detailed look. And here I want to show you a couple of pictures from that teardown, so you can have an understanding of what a typical construction looks like internally. As mentioned earlier, the core of the egg oscillator is the egg sphere, which serves as a tunable element. For temperature stability, the sphere is usually mounted on a thin rod with high thermal conductivity so that heater can be used to regulate the operating temperature of the egg sphere. Of course, the rod cannot be ferromagnetic, so it is sometimes made of beryllium, which is a diamagnetic. Oscillators used in frequency sweeping operation like this specific egg that I have here typically don't have integrated heaters, as frequency stability is usually not critical. The magnetic fields required for tuning are usually generated by a relatively large electromagnet, as you can see in the picture here. The large coil that you can see in the picture is the main tuning coil. Again, depending on the design, some smaller eggs, especially the ones do not require a wide tuning range, can utilize a permanent magnet and have a smaller coil instead to fine-tune the generated frequency. If you look really carefully, you can see that in this picture, there's another coil towards the center in the egg that is used in the WaveTech 907. And that much smaller coil is sometimes called the FM coil used for frequency modulation. Basically, it is used to fine-tune the frequency by generating a small magnetic field that is superimposed on top of the magnetic field generated by the main tuning coil. So that's how a egg is tuned. The actual oscillator can take many forms. For instance, in the WaveTech 907, it is a gun-dialed oscillator and this diagram illustrates the gun diode oscillator in relationship to the egg sphere. And you can see a couple of uh, uh, cobbling loops around the egg sphere to pick, out, uh, to pick up this signal. And uh, here is the gun diode biasing circuit. And uh, that gun diode is typically used for higher operating frequency and higher output. So for that WaveTech 907, it is uh, in the 7 to 11 uh, gigahertz range. Of course, depending on the frequency range, a traditional bipolar junction transistor of FET, or at some very high frequencies, a gallium arsenide transistor can also be used. 
And here I have a page from a, some literature from HP that illustrate how the circuit for egg oscillator works. And basically we have a bipolar oscillator and a FET oscillator. And as you can see, the egg element here is really just serves as a, a tuning element in both of these configurations. And down here we also have another uh, diagram illustrate how the tuning works again towards the center. This is a a egg sphere mounted on a rod. We have a magnetic field that is added on top of the egg sphere. So that is how we control the resonant frequency. So let's take a brief look at the pinout of this specific egg oscillator. Now keep in mind that eggs from HP have a very different pinout than eggs from other manufacturers. So you need to be very, very careful. And uh, this specific egg, uh, the part number is 5086-7023. And this came from a uh, frequency extension plugin for HP 8660C. And uh, the pinout, I have it here. I, by the way, I'll also put this on my website so you can take a look. And uh, it basically has a ground connection and we have uh, two biases. One is plus 20 volts, one is uh, mag uh, uh, minus 10 volts. And we also have the main tuning coil between the pin three and four and uh, FM coil between two, pin two and pin five. Now let's take a look at the experiment setup. It looks a little bit complicated and messy. That's just because there are quite a few loose wires here. But the actual setup is quite simple. Located here is the egg oscillator and uh, the plus 20 volts and uh, the negative 10 volts bias came from the emerald power supply sitting back there. Now, if you recall, we have the pin out. So just to remind you that uh, the first pin, this is a 20 volts bias and uh, the pin number six, that's the minus 10 volt bias. I couldn't find any information on what kind of oscillator circuitry is used in this HP egg device. But from the voltages used here, it could be utilizing a bipolar transistor setup. The main tuning coil is powered by an HP 6181C current source up there. And I'm using this BK Precision multimeter to monitor the coil current. And once I power it up, you will be able to see the current reading from this meter. Another power supply, uh, the Lambda one back in the corner, that is used in conjunction with this uh, array electronic load to provide the FM coil current. The FM coil connection is optional if you just want to produce an output from the egg oscillator. But later on, I will demonstrate using the FM coil to fine tune the output frequency. Depending on the polarity of the current going into the FM coil, the additional magnetic field can be either added or subtracted from the main magnetic field generated by the uh, tuning coil and therefore fine tune the frequency in either direction. Since the output power from the egg oscillator can be quite high, up to 20 dBm or so, I added two 3 dB attenuators in line to reduce the output power a little bit before feeding into the 8566B spectrum analyzer. Now let me power things on. The only rails that need to be powered on simultaneously are the plus 20 and minus 10 volts, which I had already set up. So when I turn on the power supply, both rails will be available. Other than that, the coils can be powered on at pretty much any time. Because I'm running off three power supplies, let me turn on the main coil current first, and then I will power on uh, the power supply for the FM coil. And then finally, we can power on the actual egg oscillator. So let me first turn on the multimeter here. And I'm going to turn on the 6181C current source. Right now the current is set at uh, uh, 118 milliamps and I think that's when I was last powering on the egg oscillator. So let's leave the current as is 
and we'll adjust later. Now let me turn on the other power supply here. That is for the FM coil. And I'm going to just get everything ready so that when we power it on, we can uh, start adjusting. So now basically the coil currents are on now. And you can see we can adjust this as well. So let's uh, turn it back down. Now let me turn on the spectral analyzer. Now it will be a little bit loud, but uh, um, I will try to speak louder so you can hear me. So now the spectral analyzer is warmed up and I'm going to power on the egg. So now remember the Emerald power supply here that's controlling the, uh, that's to supply the plus and minus voltage rail for the egg oscillator. So now let me power it on. And now we are uh, powered on. So you can see that the 20 volts and uh, minus 10 volts, both are drawing roughly 60 milliamp of a current. So that's actually pretty low. So let me just show you the, uh, the current here. So uh, hopefully you can see my meter here. And uh, I'm going to measure. So this would be my ground. The first one is uh, pin number one. So that's my 20 volts. And the next one, that's my it's pin number six, it's my minus 10 volts. So the current, uh, sorry, so the voltage indeed are here. And also on the spectral analyzer, you can see many spectral lines that's uh, showing up. So obviously the uh, one, the base tone is the lowest one, and the other are just some of the higher harmonics. So now let's zoom in to that uh, base tone and uh, see what the frequency is at. So I'm going to set my uh, center frequency to 2.5 gigahertz. And that's actually approximately where that signal was. And uh, you notice that the signal is actually a little bit out of the range. That's because even with this uh, six decibel attenuation, it's still stronger than that. So I'm going to add an additional, uh, I'm going to change the reference level to uh, 10 dBm so that uh, the signal will be brought down. Okay, so now we can see that uh, the signal is sitting nicely in the middle here and we do a peak search that's uh, roughly 2.97 gigahertz and so let's, uh, let's call it 2.5 gigahertz. So what we want to see is we want it to reduce the bandwidth uh, so that uh, we can see the signal a little bit cl closer here, so to speak. So we change the resolution bandwidth to, uh, actually let's change the, uh, the center frequency to 2.5 and let's change the frequency of span first. Right now it's one gigahertz. Let's change it to uh, 50 megahertz. And uh, now, of course, the signal is very fat because we, uh, we need to reduce the resolution bandwidth. So let's reduce that to, right now it's sitting at three megahertz. Let's reduce that to 100 uh, kilohertz. So now you can already see uh, the signal taking shape. By the way, the, uh, the sideband looks a little bit of uh, fuzzy here. And that's because actually not many, th those are just some artifacts introduced by this uh, electronic load. It actually took me a while to figure out. And uh, I can show you by remove this uh, electronic load pin. So as you can see here, if I reduce this, uh, remove this FM pin and uh, the signal actually is very, very clean. But uh, um, I'm going to add it back on here and further reduce the, uh, the uh, um, the frequency span so that we can use the FM coil tuning to see how we can fine tune the frequency here. So now let me further reduce the frequency span to 10 megahertz. And yeah, so now you can see the sideband is even more exaggerated here. And in fact, um, if I remove the 
FM coil connection, even though I'm not applying any current yet. But if I remove that, you can see that we get a significantly cleaner signal. So just remember that is the artifact we're introducing here. Uh, so, okay, so now let's reduce the resolution bandwidth to 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz. And actually, let's increase it a little bit because right now the scan is too slow. So let's change it to 30 kilohertz. So that is reasonable. And in fact, um, that is really pronounced, the FM modulation on the uh, signal here. But uh, let's, uh, let's put it back on. Okay, so now if you watch the, uh, my uh, current reading here on the electronic load, you'll see. And it's actually going the other way because, uh, because I'm, uh, you know, this can be tuned either way. But right now it's going on the, uh, to the, towards the lower side. So let's actually increase the main coil current a little bit so that we can see the range a little bit better here. So let me, and it's going to be very sensitive because right now we are, um, so that's because right now our bandwidth is really narrow. Now, as you can see, either the main coil or the FM coil can be used to adjust the frequency, but the FM coil, nevertheless, we can adjust it much more uh, in fine detail here. So now if we change the uh, adjust the frequency here, you can see, adjust the current rather, we can control that signal in our, uh, we can control the signal here. Okay, so now let's uh, turn off the FM coil. And I wanted to show you one more thing that can affect the signal here. So let's let it settle here. And in fact, let's increase the frequency uh, span a little bit more. So let's do a 50 megahertz here. And uh, let's change the resolution bandwidth to be 100 kilohertz so that the scan will be faster. So now what happens if I put a magnet uh, near this oscillator? Because the frequency is tuned by exerting an, a magnetic field, if I put an external mag magnet, like a strong neodymium one, uh, it will affect the actual magnetic field. Therefore, you gotta shift the, uh, the peak. So let's see here. So if I put my magnet here, as you can see, it actually affects quite a bit. So that's just another reason uh, to keep in mind that we need to make sure that there's no strong magnetic field around your egg oscillator. Otherwise, you're gonna affect your output frequency. So in fact, uh, you know, I can put it up here and it affects one way and put it, uh, depends on the polarity of the, uh, the magnets I'm putting on. You can see that I can tune the peak uh, either way. Sorry, you can't see. So now you can see here, if I do this way and this way. So you can see that indeed we're affecting the peak. So what I want to do next is trying to see how far we can tune the frequency range. So now we are at a current a coil current of 118 milliamp. And uh, let's see if we can, uh, what is the maximum frequency range we can achieve via this uh, main coil tuning. So let's uh, reset the bandwidth here. So let's set the start frequency to be two gigahertz and uh, stop frequency to be five gigahertz. And we're gonna relax the uh, resolution bandwidth a little bit so that we can scan faster here. And let's do one megahertz. And let's start changing the current and we'll see what uh, tuning range we can achieve. So we can reduce current and we'll tune it down. And now we can actually see the second harmonic uh, right there in the screen. So we can drop it down to uh, two gigahertz. And uh, so in fact, it can go much, uh, it can go further down. And uh, this HP 5086-7023 is specified to go from 2.7 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz. Now we're at two, gigahertz, which is already lower than what was specified uh, as a minimum frequency. So later on, we'll see how far down we can uh, tune the frequency. 
But now let's see the other way to see how far we can go up. So for that, I'm going to uh, increase the current. And uh, let's tune it. As you can see, the frequency is increasing as the tuning current is increasing. And uh, the peak stays relatively at the same output level, so which is actually pretty level here. And at some point, right around here, I'm not sure you can see that, but uh, the output level started dropping. And in fact, after it starts dropping, it will rapidly uh, attenuate and then it will disappear. You can see that. So I'm calling that uh, this point, uh, it probably went down about five or six decibels, but uh, that roughly is the maximum uh, frequency you can achieve. So now let's actually take a measurement and uh, that marker was actually not here, that marker was here. So let's take a, a measurement peak search. Right now we're at a three, sorry, at 4.5-ish, just about 4.5. So this is a little bit higher than the 4.2 gigahertz, which is specified as maximum. And uh, remember now, the highest uh, frequency we can achieve is 4.5 gigahertz. So now let's go all the way down. And by the way, that is out of a tuning current of a 216 milliamps. So to see uh, how far we can go down, we need to switch it uh, to, let's say, start frequency to be 1 gigahertz. And uh, uh, stop frequency to be 2 gigahertz, because we already know it can go at uh, uh, 2 gigahertz. So now let's tune the uh, current back down. And uh, at some point, we should see the peak. Yep, here we go. And that's a 93, 80 milliamps, and the peak is going down, so we can still go f further down. And you can see again, at this point, uh, it rapidly collapses. So here is roughly where we want to call it the lowest frequency. And if I take a peak measure again, let's uh, do that. And we're sitting at 1.437 gigahertz at, with a uh, coil current of uh, 66 milliamps. So that is significantly lower than the 2.7 uh, minimum uh, frequency tuning range. So anyway, so now you get an idea of uh, how the egg oscillator works. And uh, I give you a demonstration of uh, how this specific one is working uh, with both the main tuning coil and the FM coil. So I hope you enjoy the video and learn something new. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.